Good evening and welcome to another edition of the HEC Experience. It's an opportunity for us to talk to some of the personalities that we have on campus at Hutchinson Community College and perhaps acquaint the community with some of the exciting programs that we offer. Tonight's guest is uh, Loretta Horton and Loretta is the co-chair of the Allied Health Department. She also is director of the Health Information Technology Program. And welcome, Loretta. It's great to have you on the show this evening and talk a little bit about the program and some of the exciting things that are happening in Allied Health Education at Hutchinson Community College. Well, thank you for asking me to be here, Dr. Berger. Um, as you said, I'm the co-chair of the Allied Health uh, Department, and I have several programs that um, I oversee. Um, health information technology is uh, one of them, of course, and then um, surgical technology, radiologic technology, pharmacy technician. So uh, this, we're very busy this semester. Students are uh, getting ready to um, go out on their clinicals either at the end of this semester uh, or next semester. So. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about what's going on with pharmacy technician, for example. Okay, can I tell our viewers what farm tech is to start with? Okay, that's... And, and how, why that program is so very important for not only Reno County, but also all of Western Kansas. Okay, that uh, the program is um, offered <coughs> online. Uh, there is a requirement that students come in one uh, weekend during their uh, year. It's a year-long program. They spend time working on their classes, uh, completing a lab, and then uh, completing uh, a clinical in a, either in a hospital or in a, a commercial retail pharmacy. Right now, the, the program is important because many facilities are getting to the point where they want someone who has a credential in order to uh, work with patients and their medications. So a very important credential. Is that a one year or two year program? It's a one year certificate one year program. program, right. And the students were just here on campus uh, last weekend. They come in on a Friday and a Saturday. They um, did some work with um, non-sterile and sterile compounding of medications. They made ointments. They practiced their math calculations, very important in that field. They um, have a, a really great time being on campus, too. They get very excited about coming because their classes are online, so they have an opportunity to meet the instructors and meet the other people in their class. So it, it's an exciting time for both the instructors and the students. So they had a good time here on campus. Uh, last week. How many students do we have in that program, Loretta? Oh gosh, we have, uh, I think we only had about 12 come for the lab this last weekend, but we have about uh, 20, a little bit over maybe 22 students in the program right now. 22 students in the program and it's a one-year program then they can go out to the field and go right to work. That's absolutely right, yes. And we do have some students who uh, are in Western Kansas who take the classes and then just come in for the weekend. You, know, you talk about some of those small rural counties. It's my understanding that we have a, a large number of rural counties that don't have pharmacists. And this is one way to extend those services to that population. Stafford County is a good example. Did not have a pharmacist, but if you have a farm tech there working under the supervision of a, perhaps an off-site pharmacist, they can provide the services. That's right. That's right. So it's a great program uh, for our community. Uh, we also have our uh, surgical technology students who are busy in the lab. They are also taking uh, <coughs> classes. Uh, some are online and some are in the classroom, but they're also in the lab and they're practicing all kinds of things to get them ready to go out on their clinical. And the, um, the interesting thing about their clinical is that they have to be approved before they can go out to their clinical site. Can kind of tell us what a surge tech does? I think, you know, just mentioning surge tech it might conjure up all sorts of different uh, kind of job descriptions and job roles. Sure. What, what does a surge tech qualify to do when they leave our program? They are able to assist the surgeon in the operating suite. Uh, they help prepare the instruments, get them all ready. They um, pass the instruments to the surgeon. 
And so um, in their lab, they're practicing those very things. They have to identify all the instruments. They have to set up the tray for certain types of procedures because certain instruments are used in certain procedures. So they set the tray. They practice uh, scrubbing and uh, have to meet certain requirements in order to scrub properly. They um, practice how to gown the surgeon. They um, practice how to set up the room and, and what kinds of equipment they might need in the room. So uh, the instructors give them a particular scenario and they have to go and get the right instruments for that, uh, for that case. So they're doing a lot of that um, right now. They'll start their very first clinical in December for a few weeks, and then they'll be out on clinicals for most of the next semester. It's also a one-year certificate program. Those students then can take a, a credentialing exam at the end um, to become a certified surge tech. And um, also getting to be very important, many facilities are requiring uh, certification of their techs before they hire them. So also, very <coughs> so they go important. through our program, and then they sit for the exam, and then they go for employment. But they can go out into the work world without that certification, correct? Yes, they can. Um, some uh, facilities will <coughs> want them uh, to come in and um, take care of their instruments, just just to be an instrument tech, for example. And those people have very important roles in uh, keeping the instruments uh, clean and safe, make uh, sure they examine the instruments to make sure that they're, um, they're okay for the next surgery that comes up. You know, I think uh, the, one of the interesting points about this program is the physical requirement that you have for those students and what they have to be able to hold and carry and lift to be a part of, of this, uh, this program, a real physical job. It, it is physical, and then um, it does require <coughs> students to be able to stand for long periods of time as well, because some surgical procedures may take six, eight hours. So they have to be able to stand, have pretty good stamina in order to get through the program. But a rewarding program, certainly. I've talked to individuals afterwards who said, wow, <laughs> they've uh, really learned so much every day. So I think so the, it's a rewarding the, career. <clears throat> the surgery suite certainly an example of something that that student will work in. But they, got, they can also go to dental offices and, and other physicians' offices as well. It's not something just limited to a hospital or a clinic in a surgical environment. You're right, you're right. Um, and with the number of uh, alternative care facilities, it's a good place for them to be. Uh, surge tech, farm tech. And um, radiology, uh, okay. radiologic technology is also there. And the students are really busy this semester. That's a, a two-year associate degree program. And uh, the first year students are busy, certainly in their classrooms with lecture, but they're also starting their lab, uh, starting to uh, learn how to position patients for different cases. And they have to, um, the, the instructor will give them a particular case and say, we're going to do this type of x-ray on the patient. And so one of the other students is there to be their patient, or they also have a mannequin there to help. But then they position that patient for that uh, particular x-ray. So they're learning all those different positions. They're just now also ready to go out to the clinical sites to observe how they work with patients. And so it's a really exciting time for the first year student to be able to go and they make those networks as they're going out there learning, um, learning about different facilities. They're required to go to at least three facilities around here. And uh, so they're making those networks and they're uh, learning about different pr types of procedures. The second year students have just, um, are just in a class that we call modalities. And so they're uh, learning about special procedures, things like uh, angiograms, which is um, taking a picture of a person's veins or vessels. 
um, and uh, CT scans and MRIs. So they're doing some, learning some special procedures right now. In addition to uh, their clinical, they're set up with a clinical site and they work with um, a radi uh, radiology technician there and they um, follow that person around, work with patients, getting them through the entire procedure. You know, we have, that's an older program for Hutchinson Community College. We've had that Oh, for gosh. probably 35 years at least, maybe maybe longer, maybe 40 years. That's a long-standing program at this institution, and we've been providing techs for the state of Kansas and beyond for a long time. The other two programs you mentioned are relatively new programs. The Surge Tech is probably, what, 10 or 12 years old, I suppose. And, I think so. And the Farm Tech, probably three or four years old. Uh, pharmacy tech's about four years, and um, you're right about surge tech. It's relatively new. It, you know, I think it's interesting, too, that these programs are third-party accredited. And what does that mean for the student, and what does it mean also for the employer when they're hiring somebody out of our program? I think the most important thing about being an accredited program is that you're we we are making a guarantee that we're following certain standards from the accrediting agency. They have uh, certain guidelines that uh, we have to meet, certain rules, and we meet those in order to maintain our accreditation. And accrediting agencies are uh, important to ensure the public that the education that we give follows those guidelines. And they have a variety of guidelines. Um, things that have to do so much even as administration. You have to be in certain types of schools, schools that are accredited. And you have to have a certain type of uh, curriculum. You have to make sure your instructors are credentialed, that you have the resources necessary to teach, and you have the space available as well. So there are a lot of standards that have to be met, but the primary purpose is to ensure the public that um, we're giving the education that is required. And that's important for the student, that's important for the employer, but of course ultimately the patient is the benefactor of all of that. I think so. And you know, I know that uh, most accrediting visits uh, when they come to campus look for all sorts of different things and one of the things that they look for is that tie to clinicals and the, the clinical partnerships that we have and how important they are for the success of the program. You're right, you're right. They're always going to look for the clinical site. They're going to look um, to the support that we get from administration and, and we're lucky in our school we have that support from administration. And um, so yeah, they're, they're looking for all of those kinds of things. So how many different clinical sites do you have in a, say a farm tech program and a mm -hmm. surge tech? And well, primarily we use the facilities uh, certainly around Hutchinson, but we can't use only Hutchinson. They don't have the, the capability of training all of our students. So we go as far as Salina and Wichita. In the uh, radiology program, we have a site in Emporia. We go as far as Pratt and Great Bend as well. So we try to use as many of the facilities as possible. That's a really good experience for the student to be able to see different hospitals in different settings, but also to get the maximum amount of experience that they need when they become a professional or tech in the field. That's right. And most of the accrediting agencies also require, for example, that you do certain types of procedures in the, the surge uh, tech accreditation, so we have to make sure that the student uh, visits a variety of sites in order to make sure that they get those types of procedures so that they're prepared when they um, enter the field. The same with uh, radiology, you have to make sure that they have um, certain uh, types of procedures that they've been exposed to. When you complete a program of this nature, I know the technology changes very quickly in all of Allied Health, really all fields. Is there a required continuing education update for each one of these programs you just mentioned, radiology and farm tech and surge tech? Absolutely. Once you, uh, once an individual has their um, credential, then they are required usually to have a certain number of 
continuing education hours. So they meet that by going to meetings or by visiting other clinical sites or doing some sort of activity that's approved by their national association. So lot, lots of uh, continuing education. Again, it's, it's proof to the public that those people have kept up to date. You know, one of the things we always talk about certainly is the barriers we have to delivering some of this. And one of the barriers is finding great instructors. Um, that's true. That's true. We could certainly always use uh, individuals who would like to move from the clinical site <laughs> to the classroom. And, um, and I know we're not the only school uh, suffering in that. Uh, many schools have that uh, problem that um, for whatever reason individuals like to stay at their clinical site. But yep, yeah, we need instructors all the time. Always looking for instructors and certainly uh, when you look at competing with uh, some of the wages that these individuals make in the allied health community, it makes it a little difficult for a public institutions sometimes to meet those salaries. It is. Um, you know, we, we like to think that if you're going to be in education, you have a certain calling. You, uh, you want to help students. You, you've had a great career and you want other people to have the benefit. And so being able to um, share that information is really great. Certainly we like to have individuals who have had experience, can bring that to the classroom, can share that with the students. And I think the students really appreciate having that. Um, but uh, the other thing is we, I think that um, there are so many other benefits to being in um, instruction. And some of our instructors um, have the ability to continue their experiences at clinical sites. So they can continue teaching as well as, or working in the field as well as teaching. Right, right. You know, what, one of the, I think, issues with allied health education, <clears throat> and I guess the advantage of a teacher might have over someone practicing, is that practitioner, that's, that's very hard work. It's physical work. And we talked about Surge Tech as an example of that, uh, and it's not something you can probably do. Uh, uh, your entire life. You That's probably can only do that through a certain age and then you begin getting to the point that you just can't physically handle it anymore. That's true and uh, so many of the allied health fields are physical in nature and after a while um, it starts to have a wear and tear on the body and so sometimes those individuals may not think of education as a possibility but it's a it's a good road for individuals to think of. We'll come back after a short break and talk about uh, health information technology, but uh, this time I'd like to see some more programs from Hutchinson Community College and some of the other exciting things that are happening on our campus. Welcome back to the HCC Experience. I'm Ed Berger, President of Hutchinson Community College, and our guest this evening is Loretta Horton. Loretta Horton is co-chair of the Allied Health Department and also director of the Health Information Technology Program. The first part of our show, we talked about radiology, we talked about uh, surge tech, we talked about farm tech, but we might talk a little bit about uh, health information technology and how that area has changed and 
how really some federal mandates have made that program pretty darn significant for our health care providers. Right. Um, wow, who knew 20 years ago that uh, health information would be even more important than it was then. But um, we have a, a two-year associate de degree program in health information technology. We also have a medical coding certificate and a transcription certificate in our program. Uh, and as you said, there have been uh, a number of federal regulations over the last few years that have really impacted health information, HIPAA for one, that uh, most people, um, who, anyone who's been to a doctor's office knows they've signed a form regarding HIPAA the, to protect their privacy and, and that impacted uh, health information quite a bit. There's been a, a huge change in our uh, coding system that is really impacting the healthcare field, uh, moving from uh, ICD-9, International Classification of Diseases, ninth edition to the 10th edition. And that's something in the healthcare field that we've been trying to do for about 20 years. It has finally gotten here. Uh, the rest of the world has been on ICD-10, and that's something that maybe most people don't know, but all healthcare facilities around the world use uh, or try to use the same coding system because then it's easier for the World Health Organization to collect information about uh, illness and diseases. And so the United States has uh, lagged far behind that for the last many years here, and finally we're catching up uh, to the rest of the world. But it uh, has caused quite a bit of consternation in uh, the healthcare communities, and, but we are going forward with it, and uh, we'll start in October of 2014. So that seems like a long way off, but really when you think about the training that's involved, we have to get students ready uh, to be able to, to code in that. And it's an entirely different system from ICD-9. Uh, ICD-9 is primarily um, uh, numbers, digits, but this one is an alphanumeric system, so mm. quite, a, quite a few uh, differences. But, but basically with ICD-9, we were running out of code. We were running out of them because of so many new procedures that have been um, developed and diseases that uh, have been reclassified. So. Um, big news in health information with that. You, you know, we've got one of the older programs in the, the state, <laughs> and you just celebrated an anniversary. That's right. We celebrated uh, 45 years here. Um, it was uh, a fun time for our program to uh, get an opportunity to see some people we hadn't seen in a long time, but um, we had a good turnout and a lot of people emailing us and saying congratulations to having such a, a program for that many years. It's, it's unusual for a program, to, any program really, to be in existence for that long a period of time. You know, I, I know you have some exciting things coming up that you'd like to talk about as far as health information technology, Loretta, what, what, are, okay. what might some of those be? Well, you know, I, I just mentioned we, all, we have a certificate in uh, coding and um, transcription. Transcription has really evolved over the last um, five, ten years, and uh, we're undergoing uh, what's referred to as a, an alignment project with uh, KBOR, the Kansas Board of Regents, and um, the purpose of that is to make certain that other that all programs that have a similar um, pro, uh, similar curriculum in the state would be um, transferable, and so we've uh, undergone that. We're waiting for word from uh, KBOR, but there will be some significant changes in that program to make that uh, individual not just a transcriptionist but a uh, documentation specialist. So. So in that regard, that's going to mean a, a number of changes for our program. We also have um, a new program at the college, IT in healthcare. It's a combination of uh, IS and healthcare. So it's a really uh, exciting program. It uh, combines what an individual might know in uh, health information with the um, electronic end of things. Uh, with the move to the electronic health record, there's a need for individuals who have uh, 
both of those skill sets. Um, and also for the IS individual who doesn't really know anything about healthcare, this is a great opportunity for them to uh, get a little bit of information about healthcare and be able to work in that environment. So it's a, a fairly new program. We have uh, two certificates right now in it, a um, health information specialist and a health information redesign specialist. The health information specialist is a, an individual who would help facilities uh, transition from paper records to an electronic record. And the redesign specialist is someone who would help redesign the jobs that you do with paper records to an electronic format. So it's a, a really exciting um, combination of skills. The other thing I wanted to make certain that we talked about was um, that our department is developing a new course in healthcare ethics. And this has uh, gained a lot of um, publicity in the last several years as well. Ethics is uh, something that we uh, really wanted to focus in on at the college. And it's being developed by two individuals here, DJ Chastain, who's our allied health advisor, has a really great background in social work and social justice, and Teresa Pauls, who is the respiratory uh, therapy director, and she has a, uh, uh, just finished her master's in uh, theologic studies, but has a, a great ex experience with working with individuals um, in the clinical setting. So uh, it's a good combination to uh, develop that course, and we plan on having that offered this, um, this coming spring. So an individual could take it um, as an elective if they wanted, or in individuals already credentialed in the field <clears throat> could take that course, and it would be online. So it's uh, looking to be a really interesting uh, course with lots of great discussion. Do we have that approved for continuing education in healthcare? In the Not yet. Programs? We're since it's just being uh, introduced. We that's our next step after it gets on the schedule to look at the different um, accrediting or credentialing agencies to see if they would approve that for continuing education. I, we don't think it's a problem. We've gone to um, everyone in our department and everyone has kind of said, signed off on it and said, yeah, they did not think that that would be a problem getting it approved. But um, we think it's gonna be a, a great course for individuals. I think it's interesting, health information technology has a really a national constituency now since the program is online and we've been working toward having that whole program online now for 15 years, I suppose. It's been a, a long time. It was uh, one of the first in the country to go online. We have just a, a great number of students. We have a, a great number of success stories of individuals who have had no other opportunity to get their degree and um, came to us and was able to uh, finish it and get their credential. So uh, we've been very happy. Uh, with it, we, th we believe our um, students have been happy with it as well. So it's, uh, it's going really well. Loretta, as we wrap up, could you uh, perhaps tell our viewers some contact information for them in case they would like to learn more about allied health programs or what they would have to do to qualify and to enroll? Okay. Uh, I think the best person to contact would be DJ Chastain, who is our allied health advisor and his number locally is 728-8100 and uh, Ruth Jensen is the coordinator of the IT and healthcare program and her number is uh, 694-2454 and uh, DJ can handle all of the allied health uh, advising for all of our departments <coughs> or get um, get you get anyone in touch with uh, any of the coordinators of the program. Loretta, thank you very much for joining us on the HEC Experience. And we also like to thank the viewers for being with us uh, this evening. And again, if you have any questions uh, about allied health programming at Hutchinson Community College, why, make sure you give us a ring. It's a valid and growing area at Hutchinson Community College.